There's a fundamental problem that exists today in most harassment or sexual harassment training, and that deals with who can be abused. So what do you typically hear in the news? Ex-female was abused by a greater powered male in her life. Not different, really, than how we started our training with considering the Forrest Gump movie example. But that example is like, it's like taking a picture of the desert and saying that all landscapes are dry, brown, and arid. The truth is, sexual harassment can happen in many places and to many different people. In fact, more legal issues regarding sexual harassment take place with broad groups rather than the media image that we see almost nightly on the news. So let's take a look at categories of people that are often the brunt of harassment. Most folks assume that harassment happens from the, the top of the organization down, but more and more we're finding that supervisors are the brunt of harassment. Whether it's up or down the organizational ladder, any employee can be the victim of harassment. Likewise, vendors or those performing contract labor are potential targets of harassment, as could be third parties or the public. So often we assume that it's, it's only those employed in the workplace that we have to be concerned with when in reality anyone we connect with could be the subject of harassment. In fact, a new study launched in 2018 called Stop Street Harassment found that 81% of women and 43% of men had experienced some form of sexual harassment in their lives and not all of that harassment happened on the job. So with these alarming numbers, where does harassment take place? Now, many of you would think, that's a stupid question. Duh! In person, Chuck. But not so fast. Of course harassment can happen in person, that's obvious. But in today's world, harassment more times than not can be more subtle. For example, I was honored to speak at a conference recently in the construction industry and they had wisely created for their membership a sample sexual harassment policy. And I was pleased to see that they had included emojis as one way that sexual harassment can take place. Now, 15 years ago, we would not be talking about emojis and sexual harassment. But then again, 20 years ago, we wouldn't know what a butt dial was. Today. LOL, butt dials and such is part of the cultural norm. So we're sending emojis or connecting via social media. Now for the life of me, I don't know why, but well-educated people sometimes think that social media gives them the right to do what they would likely never do in person. Just ask Anthony Weiner, who was sentenced to 21 months in prison for sexting. Whether it's in person, over the phone, or through social media or other methods of communication that we might not consider today, sexual harassment is not acceptable in any form. And the form doesn't limit the liability. We are accountable for the choices we make. Every choice has a consequence. And in our next section, we will talk in detail about what should we do to curb or eliminate sexual harassment.